Where are they going? No, I was just going to say that. So where do you think it is going? Do you think we're looking at a Liverpool-esque fall for 20, 30 years? The one thing that maybe insulates them is they still are the richest club in the world. Yeah, so. I think that's, that's, the big, that's the main difference because a lot of those lean years, Liverpool were struggling financially. Like if you look at some of the squads, um, oh, the particularly more recent time so. under Hodgson, etc., you know, they, 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 were, they, were really, uh, they were really struggling. But um, part of it is, seems to be, it's worrying that fans now seem quite resigned to it. Mm. You know, like this is where we we are, and there should be Diddy there should man, be more anger. I Diddy think. man was almost scratching his head last night. At yeah, the yeah. He's saying, "I can't get over how stoic the Manchester United fans are." Yeah, Mourinho's done a very good job of getting them on side and pointing the figure at Woodward and saying yeah. all the right things. But it is amazing, really, that he he hasn't been booed really at all. Yeah, because when Liverpool started to slip, there was a lot of anger among yeah. their support. Like there was a lot, you know, there was. This it was isn't a us, etc. Yeah, like it, because they were used to being up there, and I don't see. The, I think that anger seemed to be there at the start, you know, under Moy saying mm. Van Hadden said, but now it's kind of, okay, we're not where we were, but they should be up there. Like they, they have the clout. Oh yeah, you know, the, it's and a billion. It's a, know, it's a directional thing. When you look at what Bagiristan has done, for instance, at Manchester City, it's not Pep Guardiola. It's not necessarily the money. Mm. It's having somebody above the manager to dictate where that money should be spent and how. Like bringing in the likes. There's been no question asked of Emmerich Laporte since his arrival in January last year because he's just been very, very good yeah. in the performances that he's put in. And there's been a string of those Manchester City players that they brought in, not necessarily heralded with any great noise. Uh, Gabriel Jesus is probably one of those. Spurs have just scored, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, but there's been no question of how their performances. They're all just really, really good. PSV won, Spurs two. So Spurs were 1-0 down in this game. 55 minutes gone. This was one of the early kickoffs. obviously. It looks like it was Ericsson who put in the ball. It was most certainly Harry Kane who scored mm. with a header. So after going 1-0 down away to PSV, Spurs now 2-1 up with 35 minutes to go. Van Gaal really was the most wasteful with money. I mean, the amount of dross he bought for yeah. 20 million here, 25 million there, 18 million there, just brought in a raft of what I would call daily blind types. Yeah. Daily blind was not the worst defender by any means, but daily blind types and lots of them. Yeah, no, that's a, that's that's a fair point, but they're really the, the, you know their their biggest money signings, like Di, Di Maria, mm. it's gone after a year, Pogba, still the most expensive midfielder in the world, yeah. uh, could be gone very soon. You Sanchez know, the, the, looks like he's Sanchez, gone. Sanchez, you know, was it really looks like he's gone? It really looks yeah. like they've done a Fernando Torres to Chelsea. Yeah, like number. City dodged a bullet. Like yeah. they've got Mares instead, and uh, you know that's. They've got much the better of the deal, but like, where do they go now? Like, when you look at the bookies' odds of the likely successors, you know, you've got Zidane and um, uh, Conte, I think, is in there. Mm. Um, like, there's no, but like, I know Zidane won the Champions Leagues, but Real is such a strange club. You don't know if that transfers. And by all accounts, you know. he has no interest. Yeah. Either. Yeah. Does so, when was the last time United appointed a manager at the peak of their powers? Uh, at the peak of their powers. David Moyes was at the peak of his powers. Was he though? Uh, <laughs> was he though? Because you would say, suggest that perhaps... But do you want somebody at the peak of their powers or somebody who's just going to kick on? Like Alex Ferguson was about to kick on. Somebody's so. been Alex Ferguson three years before he was appointed one of European Cup winners cup, when that was actually... Yeah, but he wasn't at the peak of his powers. Yeah. The peak of his powers at United. You actually need to go back to before Alex Ferguson. So yeah. the answer to your question is a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like, like Van Gaal, was by anyone's standards yesterday's man when he yeah. was appointed. I guess who he, someone at the peak of their powers now and also with life in them, Pochettino is the big one that jumps yeah. to mind. You feel he's the next big force. Yeah, uh, yeah, because I think you need personality now that... It's interesting that um, like Pochettino and Klopp are very much... They seem very close to players, yeah. even though they bollock them out by all accounts, particularly Klopp. But Mourinho has, has just this approach now that you think... You're wondering, does it work with players? Are they, are that players at that level anymore, mm. or they just need something different? That he, he could still win trophies with them, and he has. That's the, and he has. A, he has already at the club. They could still, you know, they're tenth, but they they could still get in the top four. But it's, they're not that far adrift. But in terms of winning a league or a Champions League, yeah. and United, well, I can't see that happening under Mourinho. Yeah, that's true. It's very extraordinary, really, that a team with Rashford, Lukaku. Martial, Pogba, Mata could have looked so impotent, mm. isn't it really? I mm. mean, you couldn't have done much worse if you said, lads, go out and do whatever you think is best. Yeah, well, it's clear. Obviously, there's, there's issues around um, both talent identification and who's actually making the decisions and transfers, because Mourinho seems to 
Well, not seems to. He, he makes it pretty clear that he's not having the final say, as he did at Chelsea. And I think this is something, that's part of the reason he seems so sour the last few years. Yeah. That he has his own ideas or his own players he wanted at both Chelsea and United. He's not getting them. I'm a United fan all my life. I hope they lose now. Winning playing like this is no good. Maybe that makes me arrogant. But I supported United when Big Ron had them. Two wingers attacking, won the odd cup, but with style. What we're currently watching is just beyond comprehension for any proper United fan. The phrase, I hope they lose, I've started to hear more and more from Manchester United yeah. fans. Yeah, but like last night when you're, when you're at home to Juventus, when Ronaldo was coming back and this has hyped up it so much, uh, you've already uh, dropped points in the Champions League and you've had, you're on a bad run. You think they would have been pumped up from the, from the start, but it took them going behind in an awful first half to get any energy into the team. It's not like they were brilliant the second half. They just showed a bit of, a bit of bite and fight, but yeah. they were still... I must Pretty say, ordinary. Uh, yeah, no, they were. I must. Say, I thought in the first three, four, five, six minutes before it really settled down into the, the pattern that <coughs> that first half became, I thought there was a sharpness about the United players on the ball, more so than what we see from them in the Premier League. I think mm. they, I think they actually, which is more worrying still, they did come out a bit fired up and yeah, let's do yeah. this. And then actually, with the way Juventus were zipping that ball around, yeah, just kind of five, six minutes later, they're wrecked. Well, Juventus looked better country. coached, which oh, is yeah, an indictment. They, they looked yeah. far better coached than them. You no, know. it's true. Why don't people talk about net spend when it comes to spending players? Surely that's the most realistic figure, says Connor in Scaries. And Enda outside is Well, Mourinho's net spend is massive. It's over 300 million. I was just going to say, outside uh, Enda's stuck through. So since 2016, compared to mm. Liverpool and Man United, and total spend is 411 million Liverpool, 392 million United. Fees received Liverpool is 289. Fees received United, 85. Yeah. So the net spend for Liverpool since 2016 is 121 million. The net spend for United is over double that at 307 million sterling just since 2016. Yeah. And that's obviously excluding some of the Van Gaal years. So um, not good. We'll talk to Miguel. <coughs> later on on the football show he was at Old Trafford interestingly he was uh, saying that Ronaldo would have come to Manchester United but ultimately it was Mourinho that vetoed it was uh, what happened now maybe given the allegations yeah it might it could, it could become a, a very messy situation you might yeah. be better off yeah. yeah 